Hello, and welcome to the Agency Dallas official podcast. This is episode four, and I'm excited about episode four. We have a amazing guest today, the leader, the CEO, the myth, the legend, Mauricio Yamansky. Welcome, Mauricio. David, it's a pleasure to be here with you, man. I'm so happy for this. I've Visiting got... Dallas, checking everything out. It's just been an unbelievable. The hospitality here is amazing. I just... Uh... I'm in awe of like our launch and how everything's happened here in the last 24 hours. And tonight's going to be another amazing event. And Mauricio, of course, has uh, so many things going on in his life. And we're so thankful that he comes and visits us. So it's just a fantastic situation for everybody. I've got Brian McCauley on here as well with us, which is the Dallas Mortgage Man. And he is going to talk about all things fun and nothing uh, too dull today. And then I've got Trey Stewart, which... Uh, Trey is uh, one of our agents, if you haven't watched anything else, and he also has two podcasts on his own that he does amazing things with. So he's here for funny content, I would say. Can't wait. Accurate? Sure. <laughs> we'll see. We'll be the judge of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't so. know. What I do feel really good about is that uh, we've got, you know, Bri Brian, right? Yeah. yeah. Brian decided to wear and comfort me with a Pelican Hill shirt uh, from Southern California. That's it, man. One of the so best I, spots out I there. I appreciate that a lot. And I broke 90. Yeah, that was specific good. to you, he said. He yeah, did a lot true. of research on you. <laughs> <laughs> and read for the firm, so everybody's winning. There you go. Yeah. So I have a whole big... You know, Q and A thing here, but I don't know if I'm going to go through all this, Mauricio. I think it's just like a fun conversation with you. Um, first of all, is it safe to talk about Dancing with the Stars at this point? Because oh, you know, we could talk about thing. anything. Yeah, it is definitely <laughs> safe to talk about Dancing yeah, with the Stars. So you just I went out like literally two or three days ago that you're on the show, and you're literally like going and doing events with us, and also practicing. So we're all expecting great things. Uh, he did show me something secret, which we may or may not be able to put on this podcast about him practicing. And it looked pretty damn good, dude. Thank you, man. Yeah, I was like, Mauricio still got it with those old hips. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to tell you, this has been just an absolutely incredible experience um, to be doing this and to learning how to dance. I mean, it's something I've never done. It's uh, completely, I'm completely out of my comfort zone. Oh, I am too. Uh, my God. I love dancing. Um, just, but, you know, dancing, you know, at a bar, at a wedding, you know, yeah. at a nightclub, you know, whatever. I certainly have never, you know, learned how to like, actually move my feet and you know dance ballroom dancing with somebody while you're actually guiding them and leading them and all of that stuff and it's just been an, a really fun uh, experience so far and i'm really looking forward hopefully i'll represent the agency well on dancing with the stars we were we were doing an over under right before you got here earlier oh, how me, far along you're gonna go we at so i was like Everyone's pretty confident. Everyone I mean, has a lot of faith that you're going to take yeah. it, take the mirror ball. I, said, I like I'm that. Shocked if it's not semifinals to finals. Nice. You know, but I, I like really that. I don't even know who your competition is. Do you know who? Who is it? Well, who there's a lot about? of great competition. There's actually some really great uh, people. You know, any uh, you're actually worried about? Um, <laughs> you know, our stiffest competition. So I haven't watched anybody dance yet, right? Mm -hmm. Because we haven't had done episode one. Right. So episode one live, you know, be live this coming Tuesday. And, uh, you know, then that's the first time I'll actually watch my competitors dance. So I don't have, I've never, you know, I don't have a point of reference to know if I'm doing great, bad, amazing, shitty. I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you traveled here with your partner from Dance with the Stars. Yeah, isn't that so cool? So you, I mean, you are full it's in serious. on this. Like it's, the rehearsals just don't stop. Yeah, well, so what? this morning we went out for a four hour rehearsal and uh, I don't believe you dance. I'm already working. My first dance is the jive. Um, oh. And my second dance is the salsa, so uh, I'm already working on the second dance now. Nice. So when when Mauricio was posting his shirtless selfies on uh, Instagram, <laughs> it was because he was getting in shape for Dancing with the Stars. That's right. That's the whole thing. That's the ah, real reason why. Now we all know. Go. How did this happen? He's not thirst trapping. How'd you get recruited? <laughs> yeah, I was I was actually out in Europe with the family, and and you know um, I got an email that said you know we'd love to have you on Dancing with the Stars. I happen to be with the family. So it was kind of really convenient. I had them all locked up on, on the boat. And uh, I'm like, guys, like, uh, I got this email. I got the invitation. What does everybody feel about it, you know? And everybody was like, oh, I wouldn't do it. I'm scared. I'm like, I could never do it. And I'm like, I, I feel like I could do it. And then I, uh, everybody gave me their support. I uh, picked up the phone and I called up Rainey, the president of, our, of the agency, which was, you know, critical for me. I'm like, hey, Rainey, I got this uh, opportunity, like, you know, Obviously, it's going to take away four hours a day, but, you know, I'm practicing primarily 5 to 9 p.m. Um, so, you know, it's four hours of, uh, you know, not, not full work time, right? And, um, and so she's, uh, she's been super supportive. She's like, yeah, go for it, but just be real, be vulnerable, be yourself. Like, don't, you know, don't do anything and, you know, and go make us proud. So 
uh, I went and I went for it. Nice, man. Good. I know the feeling. 2012, I was on Family Feud. Remember that. So I got some experience under the light. Somebody told me that. Uh, That's fun. YouTube at Macaulay Family. And I answered my question correctly, which is all that matters. Yeah. For the record, even though the family lost, last question, last round, I came through with my request. So 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 this was... You were still in the mortgage business then. Yeah. You're talking about your family was on it. 2012. Like- so what happened was in 81, my aunt was Miss Texas, third runner up for Miss America. And oh, they wow. went on and they lost. Oh. So my mom's had this whole thing of like, she wants to get back. She wants to win. So in like 2011, they were putting on this whole deal downtown Dallas. Yeah. She's like, hey, we got to go down there. And I'm like, sure, mom, I love you. We'll do whatever. She so go down there. It's like American Idol. There's like 50,000 people. We stood in line for like 10 hours. I'm really? like, what, what a beat. And, of mm. course, we get there, and I'm like, dude, I want to make my mom happy, dad happy. So we do the whole, like, uh, family feud deal, and they pull us to the side. I'm like, you guys made it to the semis. I'm like, okay, great. Like, you guys make it to the finals. We'll call you. So we go home. Three months go by, and we get a call. In July, come on out there, fly out, meet Steve Harvey, the whole shebang. So it's like— This was still Steve Harvey's era. Dude, Harvey's a really long great, time ago. First of all, great guy. Yeah. He was so yeah, nice. Good Christian he man. Me up. In between uh, breaks, for us, it's like 60 seconds, like 15 minutes there. He comes out, does stand-up comedy. Oh, Super cool. I love it. Great experience. So, obviously, this man is you no know, stranger to lights, but being in Lights for Fame in 2012 was a nice experience. So, kudos to you for getting out there. Well, that's awesome. That sounds like a lot yeah, of fun. No, I, I, you know, I feel like that's one of my biggest fears is dancing in public. You know? Really? Yeah. It all depends on if you can dance or not. I literally have done it maybe three or four times in my entire life. But, like, what kind of dance? Like, yeah, what does that mean? My, like, the first time I think I danced was, like, when my, my wife and I got married, like, in public. Like, we're really dancing, and it's, like, so awkward because... I don't know how to dance that well, and she doesn't know how to dance that well. And I'm like, okay, I don't want to do this again. <laughs> then, like, you know, you get forced into situations sometimes. Like, everybody's on the dance floor, and you're like... Did you guys learn to dance for your wedding, or did you no. just kind of... No, no, no. Yeah. No, just, you know, we got married so early. I was like, maybe this is like slow dancing at prom. <laughs> just a little on the hips, just... <laughs> Tequila it. reminds me I can do You're doing all kinds of stuff on those things. It's best when it's off the cup after a few drinks, you just roll with it. Yeah, just roll with it. (laughs) Who do you think is going to be your toughest critic of your family members? Um... For the dancing, yeah, no, I got that. <laughs> yeah, I, I got that. I, I would say it's gonna, you know, my my daughter Sophia is always the toughest critic on on for everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm gonna say it's gonna be Sophia for sure. She's the youngest. No, Portia's the youngest. Oh, Sophia is the second youngest. Okay, um, but she is just on my ass and criticizes and you know analyzes everything about me. So she's definitely gonna be. Uh, she's my daughter's number. Alexia just loves everything I do. Right. So she's just gonna love it. Um, and then Portia, you know, the same way is going to just be happy and go lucky. But Sophia and Farah is going to be, you know, loving it. But Sophia is going to be the biggest critic for sure. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the daughters. Most of them, most of the time, the daughters are definitely like daddy's girls and stuff. And then you have like those situations in the family where like one of them do- definitely has a little bit more clash. Like for me, it's my oldest son. Yeah. My oldest son is like my biggest critic. Yeah. My exactly. son in between. Happy with everything I do. My daughter adores me. My oldest son is like I there's always do, one, I can right? Do nothing right in his mind. Like, there's always <laughs> one. There's to always me. one kid that is just yeah has you you know is all over your ass. Yeah, yeah. And, and one thing uh, we like I was saying earlier, we had a podcast earlier, and I had Czar and uh, Jen Cameron on here, which are amazing agents from the agency. But we had a, like a little what one minute conversation about how amazing Mauricio is as an owner slash CEO. And I did want to talk about that for a second because uh, when we launched the agency here in Dallas, we have uh, it's, it's like you're starting into something, some territory that you don't really know and what to expect. And uh, we flew around the country and saw a few of the agency offices open. And we were very impressed with how the family atmosphere is. And also how open-armed everybody was. So we met Mauricio multiple times, and Mauricio literally is like, let's get on a group text and let's start texting any questions or anything that you have, and immediately responds. So we're talking about, okay, I'm not going to name names on other brokerages, but let's name another brokerage where that would happen. Like, just one. I don't know of one. Right. I mean, maybe some little small mom-and-pop thing, you know, here where, like, he's got 10 agents and he's, you know, doing the thing, but the big ones... Like, who are you texting with the CEO of the company and the owners? Nobody. Well, thank you, Rim. And, num- and number one, what other brokerage out there that opens up a brokerage is anybody that works for the other brokerage locations going out to visit those? Nobody cares unless you're forcing them. No, but exactly. Like, with this situation, you know, with us, one of the most beautiful things is that all of our managing partners, they like, they get excited. They want, they, they actually like, 
get on the plane. They can't wait to meet you. They can't wait to see you. They can't wait to network. Um, it's a very, very exciting dynamic. And I, it's cool I, to watch. I, I praise you for starting that culture because obviously it came from you. Thank you're you. You're the one that trickled down. We, what did we say earlier? With the, the shit trickles down. I but think it she wasn't. said shit trickles down from the top, but I think she meant leadership. Leadership. And then we like <laughs> corrected that. That's what Jen said. But I mean, it shit yeah. does trickle down from the top. So like, thankfully, it's like, trickles down from the yeah, top. That's not, that's not, that's leadership yeah, that's not a All that stuff. Yeah. I'm like, you may have that phrase wrong, Jen. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah, it's but lead, it's, is it the leadership or the leadership? The leadership. <laughs> the leadership. <laughs> and that's exactly what we said. Like the leadership or is it the leadership? Yeah. But I'll tell you, Mauricio, honestly, man, uh, we're going to move past this. But I, I thank you for how you have set everything up and ran this company because everybody we hire on here is feeling like they are doing this together. This is not like Megan and I are running this company and like we're the bosses and you're going to bow down to us. We're doing this as like as we grow. We're all growing together. Yes, this sir. Is, this is a brokerage where we are trying to assist agents on a daily basis and make it to where everybody feels that they are wanted and they are in an atmosphere that is co-collaborative and also having a family-style atmosphere where you, your, your opinion matters, your presence matters. We want people coming into the office. And uh, so thanks to you. Thank you for everything. Yeah, we that celebrate you got. everybody's uh, successes and we, uh, you know, we, 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 we feel everybody's pain. And, um, and it's just one, you know, big, you know, family that, uh, that, you know, is operating and working together. The one thing I didn't say last time, which I actually, actually I had it as a fleeting thought, you know, because, of course, when you're talking about all this stuff, the amount of social media stuff that it happens with the agency, with other agents and the amount of shares and comments and likes and follows and all this stuff that's like the agency around the country around the world is all happening organically yeah. with all the agents and it's it, it's it's again something you just don't see you don't see it anywhere like nobody's sharing stuff from other brokerages that are other agents like look at this great job that this guy did in my brokerage it doesn't exist it's everybody's really like nice. everybody's like a competitor you know it's like you're competing with these other agents in the same brokerage for us we're like great job look what he did look what we did look what they did you know it's 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 fantastic so thankful we had a huge uh turnout last night uh for the actual ribbon cutting tonight is the rustic which we're going to have hundreds of people that are going to be there clients realtors partners nice. um Trey is going to be there too, wherever he falls into yeah, this. I just category. wish you told me to bring my drinking boots, man. I brought, you know, these Louis Vuitton sneakers. I mean, I got to yeah. go buy some. There's a boot good. store on every corner here. You can slide and get yeah, you a pair before it's true. Go, go to, to Cabas up the street and get you some snakes in or some croc or some crocodiles. You fit right in. Yeah. Oh, He'll be like, where's this guy from? <laughs> um, okay. So Trey had some questions that I think are more um, relatable to like, like, I'll give you an example. I'm holding a couple of his questions, so I'm going to tell you. Dancing with the Stars, Lisa Renner or Erica Jane? Which one would you choose? Well, no, that wasn't the question. Partner. It's have, have they given you any sort of tips? Because you have, you have a lot of friends that have been on the show. Have they given you any tips to, to take home the mirror ball? I, I actually have. I have a really good friend and a client of mine, uh, Evan Lysacek. I don't know if mm -hmm. you know who that is. Yeah. He, he won the gold medal for figure skating, and I think he came in second in, on... Uh, on um, dancing with the stars and i've been talking to him quite a bit and he's given me some really good advice um i have not spoken with erica or or or, or rena or any of the housewives about it yet um you know but i think uh, but evan i think has been you know my primary guy right now so what what is some of his advice that he's given you well look i mean at the end of the day on this thing it, you just said you you, you got to have fun yeah um you got to have fun you got to be vulnerable it is a dance competition but it's also about the audience and, you know, making a connection so that people feel like they're part of your journey, you know, as you're dancing, right? Mm -hmm. Your dancing journey with your your, your partner. Um, so I think that there's a little bit of both. Um, and so we have to be vulnerable. We have to be open. Um, and we got to dance our asses off, man. <laughs> I cannot imagine what your schedule looks like. What is, it must what, what be is the insane. timeline here? Like once it starts, what is it? Like is it a, is it a two-week process? What is it? Bro, it is so hard. So basically this thing starts next Tuesday, so a couple of days from uh, – less than a week from today. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, um, you know, and then you got to learn a new dance every single week. So, uh, you know, you, you finish the live performance on Tuesday. You make it. You survive. Wednesday morning you wake up and, you know – the Foxtrot, like, boom, got to learn it, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, live on Tuesday. The next day, you know, Wednesday comes, you know, boom, salsa. Got to learn it, you know, boom. 
uh, and and it just goes on and on like that. So it's literally every week, uh, your pro is critical because your pro is the one that does all the choreography, um, and you know your pro has to you know choreograph to your skill level. Uh, and so obviously, you know, the harder you work and the more you work, you're going to get a nicer, funner dance. So, um, so when y'all start this process and you're going through it, it's eliminations every day, right? Every, 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 week. every week. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so you could be back home as little as the first week. I could. Yeah. That sucks. He I won't guess. be, but he could be. He <laughs> Just, you know, my buddy was the <laughs> yeah. first one on Survivor that jumped out of the boat. I was like, bad mistake. Don't be the Ooh. first one to get off. He didn't even get 15 minutes of fame. It was 10. So, you know, oh man, <laughs> pick and choose Wiley. Like Survivor. There's no way. That that show looks extremely Do you get any choices good. on the dances or is it just like, hey, whatever pops up, you plug and play with your choreographer and you go? No, you get some choices. You get a lot of create creative uh, opportunities um, on everything. They're really good at that, you know, in terms of uh, your costumes, your outfits, your uh, the music that you get to choose. Um, I all like that. that. Stuff. But uh, uh, it's a yeah, lot it's helpful. Fun. Yeah. Um, what about buying uh, buying Beverly Hills season two? Oh, now now we're talking so more fun too. I'm very excited about season two. It's going to be already an wrapped. Incredible season. Yeah, uh, we're finishing. Uh, the production's all done. The filming's all finished right now. Oh, they finished all the episodes now. All all uh, the, the, they're cutting them right now. Okay. Um, so we're in the middle of cutting, but we filmed some incredible, incredible content. Nice. Um, I think you know we we uh, Netflix bought ten episodes this time instead of eight, so we have an That's extra two news. episodes, which will be kind of cool. It'll go to number one. I think we will, and uh, and we've got so much content that we could probably cut sixteen episodes out of this thing. Really? So I think one of the things that you know that the editors are having the hardest time with right now is uh, is cutting it into ten episodes because of how much great real estate you know porn we have, um, how much great uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that in that episode content, <laughs> you know, drama <laughs> um, lessons. <laughs> Opportunities. We actually do a uh, a live auction on that on 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 buying Beverly Hills this year. Oh, really? Oh, like that's like, kind of fun. Like a live auction where like y'all are standing in a house and people are actually we sell the steps. Uh, 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 you know, uh, I think we were asking twenty six million, twenty eight million dollars for the house. We sell a twenty eight million dollar house at auction with the gavel dropping. Boom. Really nice. Yeah. Cool. I don't think that's ever been done. Or I don't think that is. I have to say, that's the first. Yeah. That's a badass. So what? Yeah. Why, how did it come about like that, though? Like, the seller just said, like, let's... Well, you're going to have to tune in to watch, Dan. I'm, I'm going to... That's the... Oh, that's it, yeah. Hey, Be tight. Spoilers, bro. Let it build. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to some other agents about buying Beverly Hills the other day, and we were talking about how we really appreciate, compared to some other real estate shows, it really shows... It shows new agents. So she's seasoned agents. It kind of shows you every facet of the industry. It just feels yeah. more real than some of the other shows that are that are out right now. How do you feel like reality real estate shows have changed real estate? Well, um, I think one of the unique things that we have is that we have a bunch of real estate agents on television that are really busy. Right, and they've got they're active, they're doing stuff, and so because of that, um, it's a lot easier, you know, to find content to film. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and and so I think that that's you know very exciting. So you start with the people, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you guys here in Dallas have one of our stars of buying Beverly Hills, yeah, Lisa Platt, which is kind of cool. So that you know she's she kind she's by uh, not by coastal, but by. Well, you know, Twin Cities. What? what, what Where should we she, call it? California, Dallas, and um, she actually stays with your daughters when she's there in town. And stuff. yeah, she <laughs> stays at Ferris' she's, house. Yeah, she's like, she's like, I wasn't, I wasn't really the bad guy on that show. <laughs> well, they glamorized it, right? Yeah. Um, and That's one of the, the things truth. that you know, real estate agents, you know, particularly new real estate agents, they get into the business and they think that they're gonna, you know, snap, snap, make three hundred grand, right? Like that's not the way it works, right? We all know that. But the uh, but the reality shows make it seem like that's the way it works, right? Yeah. And so there's definitely made it, you know, more um, more of a glamorized job. Uh, by the same token, uh, and, and and I think a lot of people come in and then they leave because they can't survive, right? Because they don't realize that it's what it actually takes to make money in this industry, and what it actually, you know, the the staying power. It's not easy. I mean, it's. Uh, and it's we a lot, all know it's a, it's a major, major grind. It's a grind, but it's also a lot of rejection. A and I lot think, of rejection. I think that's the thing that probably gets agents the most demotivated is like if they get a no and they get another no, they're like, I can't do this job. Or right. they don't have like, I guess you'd call it the stamina to continue to go out there and hustle and try to make sales 
that are organic. A lot of agents will get their real estate license and then think their phone's about to start ringing. They post on Facebook and Instagram, I'm a realtor. And they're like, okay, now it's time to, yeah. time for that. I can't phone to yeah. yeah. So they, they, and of course, like, I love the. They go three months in, they haven't earned a check. They're like, how am I going to survive? Right. Like, you, you're like, bro, like you should have been prepared for a year. And I, and I think, <laughs> I think, I think when Trey's asking these questions about like, how does the, how do these reality shows really shape it? I think it gives it, and, and it's, it's good and bad. I mean, you always have good and bad with a lot of reality shows, but. I think it gives them a false sense of like, you're going to be pulling up in a Bentley next year showing houses because you got your real estate license. Right. And all these, all these sellers that are, that have $10 million houses are going to use whoever they contact. I mean, it's a very specific style. And one thing that um, I think is amazing about what you've done with your real estate career is in the 2008 bust, when it happened, uh, Czar was in here talking about this too, <clears throat> because I love this story, but you see the market tank. You see the market in a situation where nobody's selling or buying houses. And what do you do? Double down. You double down on it. And I was like, that's double ballsy, down. dude. Because you get a lot, you get like the everybody on, in the entire world at this point, including myself, which I was not actually a real estate agent, but I was selling for a builder at the time. Back in 2008, I was sitting in a model home waiting for people to walk in the door. Yeah. And nobody was nobody walking in. Nobody was arriving. I was sitting there for months yeah. and nobody's walking in the door. So I'm thinking, man, I got to get my real estate license. I got to go where the business is at this yeah. point. So when I heard your story that you became one of the number or even what was it? The number one agent in California or the number two or something during this time frame? Yes. Yeah, so because you actually started your advertising at that point hot and heavy and made it to where like... I'm going to own this market now. Yeah, so what I did is during this time, I was thinking to myself, well, what can I do to differentiate myself, right? right? How can I double down? And I remember my grandfather always telling me, he would always tell me this. He goes, Mauricio, you know, in life, you buy low, you sell high. You don't need to be the lowest. You don't need to be the highest, right? And so it's like, just, and, and you could take that principle and, and do it on anything, the stock market, real estate, um, anything, right? Uh, textiles, whatever, right? And the whole point is like, you don't need to be greedy. You don't need to buy the lowest and you need to sell the highest. Buy low, sell high, very simple. When everybody's buying, you sell. When everybody's selling, you buy, right? And so I'm sitting to myself and I'm thinking to myself, okay, everybody's selling right now, right? There's no buyers, right? So, and there's no, but there's no action. So, but I don't have enough money to go like, I mean, if I had money during that time, I would have bought every, I didn't, you know, I would have bought every apartment building and every family. Right. Could you imagine? I would have been like a multi-billionaire today. today. Absolutely. I didn't have that money. But what did I have? I had enough money and I'm looking there and I'm staring at this thing and I, and I, and I, and I realized that the LA Times, the newspaper, because back then we still used to advertise in yeah. newspapers, okay? <laughs> um, it, believe it or not, in 2008, we were still advertising in newspapers. I, not today, right? I mean, I haven't taken that out of the newspaper in a long, long time. No. Um, but I look at the they'll newspaper. do them for free for you now. Yeah. I look at the newspaper and it's empty. Like there's, you know, it went from, you know, 60 pages of advertisement to like two. Yeah. Right? And I think to myself, the light bulb goes off and I'm like, oh, I'm going to own the newspaper. I pick up the phone. I call up the LA Times. I cut a deal for a year. I'm like, I want 12 pages in the newspaper, uh, you know, and, uh, and I'm buying, you know, the year. So all of a sudden you open up the newspaper and there's 12 pages of me and two pages of everybody else. Right. And what appears is that I'm the only one doing business. Right. Right. So all of a sudden I start gaining market share, gaining market share. Everybody's calling me because I'm the only one that's doing business. Right. Uh, create the market share. At the end of the year, I submit my numbers and uh, they come back and I was number one in California and I was number seven in the country that year. That's amazing. Uh, I'm and serious. And that's that how going. simple it could be with the right <laughs> mindset. You know, it's like, that's just such a good story. And, and really like what has happened since then to you has now been like legendary. I mean, you're a legend in the business now, Thank like literally. You. And uh, and it's just, it's fantastic. I, I I love that story because I love how like, and, and at the time, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were just getting started, right? With the agency? No, I was not. Um, at that time I had been in the business, the agency started in 2011. Yeah. At that time it was 2008. So it was still three years before I ever thought about the agency. Okay. Um, I ended up, you know, 2008, 2009, 2010, continuing to be the number one agent in California during all of those years. I, I ended up becoming the number three agent in the country, never made number two or number one. Number one, by the way, is here. Uh, ben Caballero picked up the phone, called his ass, 
And I said, hey, I said, hey, Ben, I just want to talk to the person I'm never going to reach or chase anymore. And I just wanted to have your, I just want to hear your voice before I quit chasing your ass. Well, I mean, I feel like I grew up with the agency. Like when I was 15, 16, I watched the agency be conceptualized on Real Houses of Beverly Hills and then, you know, kind of watched that grow. And so when it came time to buy a house, the agencies would pop to my head. But that's just, I just knew it. I love that. So now we have a Dallas office. Now I had that nice house. I love yeah. that. That's a great story. And I'll tell you one thing I want to make sure we touch on in terms of reality and, and, the, and, and real estate and all that stuff. The one good thing that has come from it, uh, because that to me is glamorized, and that's kind of a bad thing because people just have the wrong perceptions. So, uh, but there is a great thing that's come from it. I think that pre, the, pre all of these shows, uh, real estate agents were considered a notch above a used car salesman. Okay. True. And because of the glamorization, we've actually seen a much better quality of people enter the real estate world. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have really great, smart um, professionals in the business now. Um, and so I feel like we've definitely leveled up on, on, uh, on the quality of the people in terms of representing our clients and customers and, you know, some of them, you know, sometimes their most important transaction they'll ever do in their life. Well, yeah. it's also, I think it's almost, almost like it's, it's a natural selection at this point too, because like you have, I, I don't remember the number of like agents that get their real estate license every year. And then the number that actually don't renew every year, yeah. it's like this, it's, it's this, big. it's this it's like massive amount of in and out. Like yeah. it's, it's always like this, you know, fulcrum point of whatever. But I would say that, um, the agents that make it through, like you said, are the agents that are really out there hustling every day and they're not just sitting around waiting for their phone to ring and some some people are going to do what they do in any industry but you can obviously see when somebody's on a really you're still selling hundreds of millions of dollars of real estate which i love i, have, I love that you're love still it. doing it i i never want to see I you lost back. A listing today and i was pissed off as fuck <laughs> see <laughs> it so happens so to everybody good. it happens to everybody yeah <laughs> i i gave, I gave the best of my listings today i'm putting on the market you know um an amazing uh, um condo project that we're bringing onto the market that's going to oh, be- Oh, hell yeah. Where is it? Extraordinary. It's in Los Angeles. Um, it, it's the Fairmont. It's uh, it's in Century City. Uh, we're Beautiful. We're bringing it onto the market this um, this week. We're launching. I was just on the phone before coming here talking about our launch party. We're going to have an extraordinary party. Hell yeah, dude. I'm going to come. You got to come to that. <laughs> you, you actually should come to that. It's going to be It's going to be. A I'm going to. I'm definitely going to make dude, congrats it. Congrats on that. It's going to be a sick party. Yeah. But I also lost today uh, a $70 million listing. With Son of a bitch. Uh, Should we blast them so, out right now? Who do they go to? So shits. <laughs> they will never hear this podcast. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's part of the. It's part of the reality, man. It's part of being. It's just part it of like our business is. and our grind. And I, you know, it's. Uh, it, it it goes both ways, you know. And at the end of the day, you do, we got to work our asses off in order to get things done. Ten agents can meet ten people, and all ten agents will get different listings. Yeah. It's never. It's never. If you have. If you have a very good, great. Uh, high-end real estate agents that are all vying for the same thing it's going to come down to personality at that point they're going to like somebody better than others and it happens to everybody so like I, i'm so like obviously 70 million is a big deal um but uh, for me i'm like it doesn't even affect me anymore like if i don't get a listing i'm just like well screw it <laughs> by the way it is this what week, it is not today but this week we we we, we achieved a uh, a 45 million dollar listing and a, and a beautiful and a 32 million dollar listing and a, and you know so yeah i got two listings oh, I forgot to ask the 70 you. that i lost you know i'd rather have them all and have 140 instead yeah. of 70 but uh, it is what it is <laughs> well you know i think i think um i think at some point someday when you decide that, you know, you're not going to sell real estate anymore or whatever it is, maybe when you die, <laughs> you will, you will definitely be satisfied with your real estate career, what you've accomplished. And there's a finite amount of people on this planet that are going to be able to do something like what you've done. Hats off to you. Um, the other thing though, I was going to say, because the last time we talked, I said, who's going to beat you? And you said, Santi may beat me this year. Is that still you think happening or no? So I am no longer the number one agent in the company. Um, that has changed. That changed uh, uh, probably uh, two years ago. Yeah. Um, Who was I it? told everybody I go and, I, you know, people that I knew were going to do amazing things such as Santiago, um, uh, James and David. I love James and David. They are fantastic. James and David are, are fantastic human beings. I, awesome. I literally, I, I when I went to the Enman, yeah. uh, 
uh, launched in New York and we went to Inman, the uh, conference, but y'all were also launching New York at that yeah. time. We sat, there's two panels that we sat on. The first panel was um, at the actual New York office being launched. Yeah. And that panel was amazing. Yeah. And then we went to an Inman panel and James was on it. Yeah. And when I say I came into it not thinking any bias towards the agency, I was literally going to be like, let's hear this panel. Let's see who does great. James freaking crushed it. Yeah. I was just like, this dude could sell anything to anybody. He's He's got all the gifts that anybody could ever have in this business. He's got that beautiful British accent. Of course. and But he's, he's, got he's the gift so of knowledgeable about so much. Like He is. The way that they started their career door knocking the neighborhoods that they wanted and still do it to this day. Charismatic. It's so amazing. Yeah. He's literally like telling people, I would walk up to a gigantic house with the gated front, push the buzzer, and ask them to let me through the gate so I could talk to them about selling their house. Yeah. And some people opened the gate. Yeah. I'm just like, that's, that's crazy. crazy. I do the art of storytelling. People are drawn into that yeah. stuff. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, of course, and he, like you said, he's got the British accent and very... <laughs> uh, I'd open the gate thing. for some man with a British accent. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, right? I mean, yeah. Like, yeah, for sure. It looks like a nice guy. Maybe I'll try it on my next cold <laughs> yeah. call. I'll yeah. work on it. I love it because it's just. I mean, can you convert a Texan accent into a British accent? I doubt it, y'all. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> I'll try. Um, so, what is. Da okay, so Dancing with the Stars is coming up that we're all going to watch that. We're actually going to do a watch party for it, by the way. Nice. I love it. Yeah, it'll be like. And we're going to vote. More importantly, we're going to vote. Yeah, That's we'll, more important. Yeah. We need yeah. you guys to vote. Yeah, and all that you guys oh, know 100%. How to vote, what we need to do to vote. Just think if the whole agency voted for you, man, you'd win. Well, we need to be I mean, sure we're talking now. about hundreds, that, that's a man thousands across yeah. the world yeah. and all their family. I mean, let's go, dude, let's do this. Let's do this. Um, okay. And then <laughs> this, <laughs> this question. What? No, okay, wait, so, if, if some of these questions are bad, yeah. I didn't write them. Okay. But if they go are good, good, then I wrote it. This, good, question, this question is funny because I'm Trey, good. Trey walked around our office uh, two days ago and he's got this, you know, his phone facing towards me and him. And he's like, okay, well, we're going to do a podcast with Mauricio. What questions do y'all want us to answer? And um, so he like put a little bubble in there that says you can ask a question. So he got questions. And one of them is, what does Mauricio smell like? <laughs> that was asked more than once. The questions oh, were, were surprising. But people are very interested to know what you smell like. Brian? Yeah. Do you want to answer that question? So far, so good, man. Yeah, as far as I go. I mean, right. I think the best person to answer that question is my wife, Kyle. Yeah. Right? Yeah, <laughs> let's call her. What cologne do you wear? Uh, that, that's a good question. Creed. Oh, that's a sponsored one. by Creed. I that's a good one. I've heard of that one. I'm so out of the cologne world we these days. You that. Creed's great. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. an amazing cologne, and uh, I recommend it. So, yeah. We'll get it for you. <laughs> I thought you yeah. wore Dracar. What's that? Dracar. No, no, not Dracar, no. But I did buy Peter. He wears Old Spice. I did buy Peter, yeah. Peter Millar as a gift <laughs> for the hundreds and thousands of dollars that I spent at Peter Millar. I got a gift for, for free cologne. It smells pretty good. I was like, I'll never. A hundred grand, it's at least it, they whatever. can do. Yeah, they can throw you a smell. Um, okay, so the other one that everybody asked for was like, what's happening next with uh, Real House of the Beverly Hills? Did y'all wrap that one already? So the Housewives is, uh, the Real Housewives is wrapped. Um, they are also... Uh, Finishing, you know, producing, you know, I mean, it's no secret, obviously, that, uh, you know, um, a lot of news broke, you know, back in uh, July, right before the July 4th, and, uh, uh, you know, about my wife and I and our issues and what we're dealing with. Um, and uh, the Housewives, uh, Brian Beverly Hills was still filming during the time. So we're definitely going to be addressing some of those issues on 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 Brian Beverly Hills. The Housewives picked up the cameras and started to film again to address some of those issues. So there's no question that that's going to be part of the drama. It'll be interesting. It'll be fun to watch. But a lot of people said that that was like planted in the news, so we could get I, more I am not going to destroy my life to fucking match it in the news, so that people can get more entertainment. Mauricio's Mauricio's making uh, anonymous keep, calls. Yeah, <laughs> I keep six. I keep hearing that. The paparazzi keep asking me that. I'm like, yeah, you know what? Like, I mean, if you guys actually, you know, if people actually think I'm, you know, I'm that smart. <laughs> uh, that, am I that smart or that conniving? I don't even know. I don't even know what the right thing is. But if people actually think I were that conniving to get you know that going, I mean, like that was a an, an absolute blow. Um, we 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 you know we were dealing with our own things kind of super quietly internally, just our own issues. I mean, certainly not. You know, we're not you know separated. We're not divorced at this point. We are not any of that stuff. We're still dealing with our 
you know, marriage. We've been married for 27 years now together. And, uh, it's been a, you know, an amazing 27 years and it's been a difficult, you know, it's been an amazing 26 years and it's been a difficult one year. Yeah. Um, you know, but, uh, Kyle and I are blessed where we actually had 26 years that, you know, we did not have a bad year. And I know most marriages have, you know, bad months, bad weeks, bad years. No, right? absolutely. Um, and so I have no idea where we'll end up at this point, but to play it out on two rea reality television shows. That's tough. Everybody uh, yeah. watching and everybody with a fucking opinion, you know, it's a lot. So no, uh, it's it's yeah. uh, it's 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 like that, um, you know, that situation where like if you put yourself out there, you're going to get external influences that you most of the time don't want to have to deal with, but you do have to deal with it because there's so many things that float around, and like that's just for anything when you're putting the optics out there for everything. So and everybody loves, I think, Kyle and Mauricio together. So hopefully, any issues that y'all have are going to be able to be worked out and stay together forever. And I would be going a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah man, absolutely. I mean, I, I mean, you guys as long are both as you great people. To like how I smell. That's <laughs> that is most important to be continued. <laughs> to be continued. That's that's most continue. important. Maybe I switched colognes. That's what. The was. <laughs> I need some of Damon's old spice. You need some yeah. of Damon's old, old spice. Old spice back, yeah. Switch it up. I st I still got some old spice in there <laughs> somewhere. It's in cabinet. <laughs> Laying them back. Uh, okay, so let's go to, um, see what, well, I don't know about this one. This, what's your favorite strain of marijuana? Okay, like, this was that? asked a lot, oh, a wow. lot. <laughs> there were a lot of weird questions, okay. and I was like, okay, huh. Well, you say, know, I so, didn't know Mauricio's so, a big weed dude. Well, <laughs> I smoke. Okay, you know, awesome. Question about that. I'm not, I don't know if I'm a big weed dude. I'm still like Snoop Dogg or Cheech Marin I, or anything The like way that. people were asking, uh, I thought you were like the Snoop Dogg of real estate. It was So I'll tell you where that came from. So it's kind of a funny thing, and I don't know if you watched this episode or not, but one of the most iconic episodes for me. So we're in Hawaii. Um, thank God my daughter's 15 and a half years old because now I can talk about it openly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. kind of, we, we've had the conversation now. But uh, So uh, you know, we're in Hawaii, and we're filming The Housewives. We're on our way to Camille Grammer's uh, wedding, and um, I decided to to take an edible, right? Um, and so I popped the edible. We we were we were between filming. Uh, we had just wrapped filming. We had like a three hour break. And in my world, I'm gonna pop an edible. I'm gonna go to the ocean. I'm gonna you know oh just relax. try to surf, relax, <laughs> chill, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, and I'm good. So I pop the edible. And I go to the ocean, I come back, and I'm like, fuck, nothing happened. It didn't work, it didn't hit me today, you know. Whenever. No, don't tell me you did another. Nope. <laughs> uh, but uh, somehow or another, it took forever to kick in. So all yeah. of a sudden, we're now filming again. We're uh, filming a dinner, and it starts hitting. But when I say hitting, it hits the hardest I've ever hit. And it's hitting, like, right as the cameras are going up. <laughs> uh, and we're live. <laughs> and so I got nothing. I, I don't know what's going on. I see the cameras. I'm laughing. I'm getting high as a kite as it's all go happening. And so there's been lots of memes about this. Uh, on, on I haven't seen them. Over, oh, they're all over the place. <laughs> because of this, I actually now have memes with me and Snoop Dogg, with me and Cheech, all of this type of thing. <laughs> and so now, you know, I've become an expert in, uh, in marijuana. Uh, which is fine. I'm totally cool with it. <laughs> and uh, uh, I prefer to smoke uh, sativa or a hybrid for sure. That's a uh, that's a sativa hybrid, mm -hmm. uh, prominently, uh, predominantly. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it is what it is. That was an iconic episode. Have you watched Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? I have, but I did not see that episode. But I actually do like the show because. Wait, did you watch that episode? Oh yes. Yeah, you see, oh. you know what I'm talking. Oh yeah, about. yeah. I, it was I, good. I got high as a kite on camera. It was. It was good. It was really good <laughs> reality television. It was. Yeah. I was. I actually uh, <laughs> thought of when, when we were talking about doing this podcast. I thought of like my probably mo most impactful moment on the Real Housewives uh, with you was. So I think this was before or right around the time I got my real estate license. So it was early. Um, what is that? What? How many? How many years has this I, been I on now? Done, what? What is y'all season? season? 12 or season thirteen? Okay, so, so it hit pretty much so, one per but year. Season two was the one that you actually did the agency, watched the agency, so, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was the season because uh, um, we were we were sitting there late in bed watching the show, and um, Megan starts telling me my wife about uh, Mauricio uh, started the real estate company, the agency. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. I never heard of that that company. She's like, yeah, because he just started it. <laughs> yeah. I didn't hear about it. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, well, let's let's check it out. And then the one of the episodes in that season, I don't remember which one, but you walk in the door, and Kyle says, "How was your appointment?" You said, "Really good. I just paid for the media room." 
<laughs> I, 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 yeah, I just paid for the media yeah, room. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that because I'm like, that's literally how we live our lives. Like, I just closed the sale, so now we can get this. Yes, you know? exactly, yes. And just so you know, I haven't seen the weed episode, but tonight I'm popping a gummy, and I'm going to find it, so I'll yeah. let you know. Nice, yeah. nice. <laughs> I'll nice. report back tomorrow. Yeah, no, you know, you know, pop it tonight because you're going to That's right, that's right. Tomorrow night. Yeah. Tomorrow night, and then just make sure you, I, I need to know your opinion on that. 100%. Now. But isn't it funny how, like, in the real estate world, you literally, you pick and choose what you're going to do because of what your backlog is. All the different things of like, okay, well, this is what's coming in this month, so I'm going to do this this month, you know? And that's that's where it kind of, like, really hit home for me. It was like, that's how we live our lives. <laughs> well, and I think one of the most important things that uh, people don't understand that are outside of the real estate world is that we're only as good as our last deal. Right? Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Like, boom, done, on to the next. Boom, right. done, on to the next. Like, there's no building blocks, right? Unless you become a real agent and you have, you know, multiple listings, multiple this, exactly. that stuff going on, you know, and otherwise you're just, you know, you're, you're really only as good as your last deal your last deal, you know, if you're not on it could be your last. Yeah. And, <laughs> and of course, and of course, when you're thinking about like all the volume that we do as like top producing agents in the business, it's, it's, it's constant. You have to find your next deal. Yep. You're not just like, oh my God, I just executed an $8 million contract. I'm good. You're like, okay, on to the next. Well, I think that's what separates the great agents from the mediocre agents, right? The mediocre agents, I, and I see it happening in my office and in our company all the time, right? Like, they close a big deal. I'll pick up the phone. I'll call them. I'm like, congratulations on your deal. I'm on vacation. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking off to Cabo. I'm like, take it off to Cabo. Yeah, yeah. I just closed a big deal. I'm like, yeah. you know, the good, the great agents, you know, that are the top, they're not taking off to Cabo after, you know, a good deal. They're like fucking... You know, that deal's over. What's next? Yeah. Next, What's next, next, What's next, next. What's yeah. next? You know, that's the big difference. The funny, the, the funny thing, I was talking to an agent uh, here in my office the other day. And we're talking about, you know, what's coming up for closings and stuff. And he's like, oh, I got this one. I got this one. And I said, and he's like, you have a good one closing soon. And I was like, yeah, I've got a $5 million closing uh, next week. And then I've also got a $575,000 closing this week. So it's like, it doesn't matter the spread, right? You're going to sell what you're going to sell and you're going to, you're going to close what comes across your plate and you're going to close it. But when you think about like ultra luxury agents, like in some areas, like Dallas's uh, average price point, I think is still like around $475,000. So you get like all these different things that'll come across and there's for every multi-million dollar sale, there's about 50 under a million dollar sales you know and and this is just you know the the world we live in so like you know for you guys y'all have gotten to a level in that office where some of the stuff that y'all close is like some of the nicest houses on the planet i mean literally like the ones that you're saying you just got under or you just got listings for for 35 45 million dollars like that's 80 million dollars in volume but how many agents in their careers can say that that's my normal listings Mm -hmm. None. Few. <laughs> Very few. Next to none. Yeah. Very few. And I and I love that about this business and this in this brokerage because you guys have really set the bar for all these other offices that are opening across the country. And when we think about the agency, we think about luxury because it's now been set to where like your marketing level, your agents that come over, it's all these people that really want to be in that volume. But they're also hardworking agents. We're not we're not hiring anybody who just got our li- their licenses. You know, we talked about this in the last episode. The, the, the level of what we want is agents that are doing pretty well, but they also want to scale their business. Brian and I, uh, you know, work with a lot of agents here in our office that they're good agents, but they're also eight to $10 million in volume. Yeah. You know, so like they have the ability to continuously scale their business, but they need help on a brokerage level. Yeah. And the marketing aspect that we do with the agency is putting them in a uh, Brett Whitfield that works uh, in our office, he's going to love this because he literally came from a different brokerage and I'll, I don't care who's going to listen to this uh, out there. This is where he came from. And <laughs> and then he's he says, okay, so it my team and I is like $25 million in volume, which is really just him and two other guys. But, and a lot of brokerages out there, you're just a number. You know, you really are. I mean, I was a, running a $100 million a year team at before we left and I had zero assistance from that company, yeah. zero. So Brett comes over here with his team and we start doing PR for him. We start doing marketing for him. He's like, I now feel like I'm somebody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is like, you are like, you don't even know like how little the amount of agents do that kind of production. Yeah. I mean, it's literally like in the single digit percentages. Yeah. The mass majority of agents across the country are 5 million or less in volume. That's right. 
I mean, it's literally just the finite amount that's like over 20 million in volume. It's a big, it's a big amount of, um, of uh, sales. So of course, when you see agents like that work for the agency, like Czar earlier, two, $300 million in volume, Jen Cameron, $200 million in volume, uh, Santi, 300 plus. What is Santi going to be at this year? Do you know? Oh, Santi's breaking 500 million. I mean, come on. Wow. Hey, by the that's, way, that's crazy. Team. He doesn't yeah, have no, it's all him. That's him. Yeah. I can't even imagine the amount of time and effort you have to put into to James make a... And David are, with their team are going to hit 700, 800 million, maybe a billion. If, if a team hit a billion by themselves, where would that put them across the country? Yeah, pretty crazy. Right? I mean, wouldn't that be like in the top so yeah, you know, if you look, how do you know nowadays? Nowadays, <laughs> nowadays, the whole the whole uh, ranking thing to me has just gotten so stupid because um, a you know back when I was doing it, nobody was cooking their numbers. Yeah, or uh, closing a shitload off market. Yeah, today <laughs> people are cooking their numbers. Absolutely. Uh, there's also you know teams, and I'm seeing people. You know, I'm seeing uh, people. You know, sign uh, sign up as the small team division, and they actually have you know. Large teams, you know, they sign up on this, and they, or as individuals, and they actually have a team of five. Like, yeah, right, and they're so putting like, all, the, all the production under their t under their own name. All the production yeah. under their own name. So it, that's all just become a bit of a mess, right? Um, so it's just a different world today. It's well, to the, pro the problem I think <laughs> I, the problem I think for some of this is is not necessarily that the the on the MLS there's a lot of obviously real data that you can use, but a lot of these agents that do say that they made you know whatever amount of volume. And they say they did it off market. Well, that's what we were talking about last night. That's technically a problem because of the uh, clear cooperation. Right. Right. So, well, we're allowed to do off market deals. We're just not allowed to advertise. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so then that that bothers me. Like when I'm looking at people's rankings and stuff when they're coming in to interview with us, and they'll say, "Oh no, I did 10 million off market." I'm like, "Great," but is it real? <laughs> yeah, can I actually Hard see to it? prove, right? <laughs> Speaking of rankings, I'm curious with your experience. What do you rank Dallas on up and coming cities, desirable places to live, economic boom? You oh, get yeah. to travel a whole lot. You've seen a lot with the COVID boom, things here and there. We know, but what's your feeling on the city next five years? What do you see? Uh, I think Dallas is 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 just a great, great city. Um, I, I, I'm actually, I, I love it here. I've been here multiple times. We've been wanting to open in Dallas now for at least five years. Mm -hmm. Um, and I am so happy and so proud to be here with you guys. Um, but you know, I've gotten, I, I live in Aspen half the time of my life and, and, you know, I'm sure you guys know that a lot of Dallas spends quite oh, yeah. in Aspen. <laughs> a lot, yeah, a lot. And so I've gotten an opportunity to meet a lot of people from Dallas and you guys, you know, you have a, uh, an incredible city and, and it's an incredible city because of the people that live here. It's a very pro business city. Um, the people are, are, are just, you know, constantly like driving. There's an amazing driving force that I don't see in other cities, uh, from people in terms of really wanting to be, and then I'm talking about business only right now, right, right. uh, you That's know, true. really wanting to be entrepreneurs, you know, uh, business forward, doing things like it's a really great dynamic city from that perspective. And, you know, I mean, it's got a great lifestyle. I mean, you guys have some some of the best golf courses in the world. You all know that I like to play golf and, uh, you know, you've got some great, you know, restaurants and, and it's, it's just a great city and it's in the middle of the country. So you can really travel anywhere. Um, how does this statistic strike you? Great real estate. I mean, Highland park, park cities, all that yeah, stuff. We're standing right so now. Weather, nice. sports yeah. teams, city. economic boom. City, I think it's yeah, on the yeah. map. I don't think it's ever going to go backwards. No, it's no. not going backwards. Um, how's, how about this statistic? Top Are you going to talk about Dak Prescott now? No. no. Different statistics. <laughs> it's, it's too early. <laughs> it's too early. Too early. Good, too, we're good first two weeks, though, for sure, yeah. And that fucking like defense. Let's just, I'm, I'm, let's, just talk about, let's just talk about the defense. Smother. Right now. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead for stats. When you said stats, I thought we were talking football. <laughs> one, <laughs> one, one stat recently shocked me, which was uh, Dallas was in the top five cities in the United States for $10-plus million sales. Amazing. Is that is that wild? That's wild. I mean, we're living in like the, that's wild. Like when an area that. where like you wouldn't call it one of the most prestigious, ultra high luxury homes, but now it's turned into that because the amount of people that have relocation here and here. all the builders. Yeah, the amount of money here shocks me sometimes because where we're standing right now or sitting is University Park, Highland Park, and the price per square foot on some of these houses that are on the market are some of the highest in the world. What the houses are hundred dollars a foot, eighteen hundred dollars yeah. a foot, two thousand dollars a foot. It's crazy. I mean, the houses are incredible too, and some of them are 
Dallas big, right? Oh, of course. Like, you know, they, <laughs> they call it the Texas mansion, but I'm telling you, like, there's a house on the market right now in this area that is uh, 18,000 square feet, and they want $25 million for it. I mean, I hear everything's bigger in Dallas, right, Trey? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> he's pointing to the pointing to the shirt that he's wearing right now for us tonight for our, yeah, for our event. Um, Brian, what's going on in the world of market for uh, real estate rates? And yeah, we, we what, all need what, to know about. I mean, when are we going to start coming down again, Brian? Yeah, well, you hit it. You hit it on the head earlier. I mean, people see opportunity. I tell everybody, higher interest rates temporarily are buyer's best time. You can go back two years ago and get a rate at three nine nine, but you'd probably be upside down in the house. So I think the people that understand and know, hey, would you rather have six nine nine right now, maybe get a deal on a house and bounce back and make some equity in twenty four months in refi? Probably a better time. Uh, rates drop down a percent in a year. Great for the payment. Where's the house going to be? Is but it cheaper? Didn't, didn't, uh, More didn't people? The, didn't the Fed say that they were not going to increase by the end of the year? They're holding right now, but they follow inflation. That's good news. I mean, that's but the they also said they're not going to decrease. Yeah, not this year. I think right. what you'll see is you'll see them hang about like this through probably Q1 of the following year, and you'll see inflation come down organically somewhere. It's coming down. And then just, I think you'll, they you'll just get need some, to give it time. I think you'll get some artificial cuts probably March or April roll into the election. But probably not much. No, I mean maybe a Quarter. half to one, but I mean yeah. rates drop a half or one percent. What's it going to do? I mean in November before inflation popped back up with Christmas spending, I mean it dropped a half and things were booming. Especially well, they here did mention that too. They said I, they were going to check on Black Friday and they were going to check gonna on take much. Uh, Christmas as, as how much was being spent right i think you'll see from let's call it march or april next year all the way till probably summertime or the laughter in 25 you'll see a percent or a percent and a half but it's not about the rate and the payment it's right. to his point where you buy like if 100%. you buy 525 today and 18 months rates are per, uh, one and a quarter cheaper the 525 is 600 you're going to pick up 75k in your roi and your wealth appreciation refi right no big deal but that's the opportunity pc mentioned it people have to not just focus on the rate and the payment. They got to look at the, the totality of buying a house. Well, the people need to focus on the payment because that's whether they can afford it or not. But but as you said, there's a bunch of you know low payments, and you went and you bought yep. a house, and you're you're upside down in it, or you bought a multifamily building or an office right. building or whatever. And you're you know you've got more debt on it than you've got value. Uh, right now is the opportunity to have value and equity. Um, but obviously, you know, you, you, people still need to make sure they can afford Yeah, that. yeah. And I mean, affordability is important, but it's, I mean, we talked about doing the buy-downs. I mean, everything right. that I have, 40% of our clients have buy-downs. Two ones, three two ones. They're getting sevens to five, sevens to four. It's a temporary 24-month window to keep affordability where they want, capture the opportunity. But also, you know, human beings have to understand, like, a house is a piece of the pie. you got expensive cars. you got credit cards. There's places to cut to get relief. And if you're going to cut, Put it into the house. You're going to make money off the house. You're not going to make it on credit cards. You're not going to make it having drinks. There are a lot of slices where people can squeeze the affordability to make it happen on a house. But the opportunity, especially with you know two or three people I'm working with here, our last three or four contracts have been two ones and three two ones right. all day. But you got to be educated in that area so you have the best of both. Good price, good rate and payment affordability, and that will bounce you into the refi boom. Um, what about the ultra luxury market? Because most people uh, in those markets, I'm assuming, are paying cash. Um, or doing a small amount of loan and doing a good amount of cash. So are you seeing the ultra luxury market slow down? Because I'm seeing that stuff actually pretty much selling here if the house is nice. I almost look at it as like it's more the house itself that's selling and not necessarily the market. Are you seeing that? That's in your... interesting that you're saying that here in Dallas. We're not seeing that at all. Really? Uh, at, at all. I think that, uh, you know, when all of this started to happen, and I remember talking to my sellers that were selling ultra high and luxury homes. Um, and we started going into the, the inflation and that's the interest rate hikes and all of that stuff. Uh, um, the sellers were always telling me, yeah, but you know, the people, the person buying my house is not going to be affected, right? They're buying in the cash, right? And they are for the most part, but the, 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 what, what I think people didn't realize, uh, and didn't count on, and it's very evident today yeah. uh, as we look at it backwards is that all of these people that are these buyers, this is not their only home. They've yeah, got true. three, four, five, six homes out there, okay? Yeah. And so they have no rush to buy. It's a luxury. It's a want. It's not a need, okay? Um, and all of these people, uh, um, the people that have money are also, you know, they think to themselves, well, I'm going to wait for the opportunity, right? This thing's going to come down. So I'm going to, you know, if I can buy something for 10 today, I bet you I can buy it for seven and a half, you know, tomorrow, Right. And they're going to wait for that to come down. And so there's a big waiting game right now. It has nothing to do with interest rates, um, but it's, it's a waiting they're, they're game. It's not crashing. affordability. It's, it's, it's about being smart. And again, yeah. people are, you know, they have their homes. I mean, sure. it's not like, I mean, yeah. you know, 
It's not like, you know. What price point is moving with no price? I have, I have four homes, okay? Like, I, 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 you know, I'm not in a rush. I mean, I'd love to buy a house in Malibu. My wife said to me the other day, she goes, let's buy a house in Malibu. And I'm like, well, let's rent one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I go let's buy it in two let's buy it in a year <laughs> right there's no like you know. we're, gonna, we're, to, we're gonna hit them when it's the right time yeah well we have a lot of transition to Dallas which is so many big companies so that's probably why we're seeing well yeah Frontier that's just announced yeah. that they're, they're moving 3,000 people you guys Dallas. have uh, uh, an immigration occurring yeah. and that yeah. immigration Correct. is saving you right and that and, 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 and there's no question mm -hmm. about that right I mean I have I know companies in Los Angeles that have moved here. Colony Capital, yeah, a um, bunch of big. You have the opposite happening there. We have the opposite yeah. happening there. We're yeah, taking them. So we're, coming we're, here. I mean, look, it's still we still have a lot of people. I mean, we're not completely there, you know, but it definitely has 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 slowed down a lot. What what price point though are you seeing moving? By the way, Aspen well. has also slowed down. You know, I, I, we we did an analysis of an Aspen, right? The Aspen year to date, uh, year to date, a year ago, there was three point seven billion dollars of real estate that had traded hand year to date today meaning the same you know to end of end, end of august yeah right um the the number is down to uh something like 1.9 billion dollars so like a third okay. so you're looking at a 40 percent, 40 to 50 percent drop in transaction volume and you know we're still doing deals but it's just it's not it's no longer 3.6 billion it's yeah two billion no, Chris right. is here. We were talking about it last night from Aspen, the uh, yeah. agency Aspen office. But you know, we just we just sent a referral to um, Aspen for an eleven million dollar closing. Nice. Yeah, it was good. Nice. Like <laughs> it worked out pretty well. Yeah. But uh, what what price point in California is moving like water? No problem whatsoever. Um, five million. You know, under three million bucks. Okay. Oh, so God. So pretty similar to here. I yeah. mean, like honestly, like the three to four million and less range is like. If it's yeah. a nice house, it's gone. It's gone. But if if you're talking about the ultra luxury here, if the house itself is extremely nice and unique and may sell, but the other stuff is sitting on the market for months and then price drops, then maybe it sells or it, it doesn't that's sell. It's the same everywhere, right? Yeah. Now, yeah. I mean, Dallas market, I think, is not something where we, you know, are setting the bar by any means, but I think we are definitely going with the wave of what's happening across America. The only difference with us, I think, is that we do have a inordinate amount of relocation coming to Dallas. Yes. Whether it's companies, whether it's people, the last, uh, I'd say this year alone, I probably had 30 transactions closed that were re relocations from people coming to Dallas for jobs, for just tired of being where they are, all kinds of uh, reasons and answers. So I think that's gonna continue because even though we're not as affordable as we think we might be, we are still getting a lot of people coming from other areas where the price points here are still more affordable than a lot of the other parts of uh, parts of the country per capita for the same type of house. So we are out of time. We have uh, an, just had an amazing guest here. I'm so thankful, Bracey. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you for everything you do. Uh, you have a very loyal company to you. Let's just put it that way. Thank you. Yeah. So thanks for coming, Brian. Appreciate it, Trey. Good as always. Thank you. And we'll see you guys again on the Agency Dallas podcast behind the red mic. Until the next time. Thank you. <laughs>